so the wing is attached, the lower wing, and we've got the uh, dihedral set. I've also added the fillet, wing fillet stickers that uh, help keep the, uh, the wing in place. And I've obviously made sure that my aileron control rods have come up through the holes in the control arm on the servo. I've also checked my alignment so that my wings and tail all line up as they, uh, as they should do and um, I'm very happy with that. The next stage is to build up the front of the aircraft but before we do that um, on the Curtis there is this little intake on the top of the nose and we're actually going to decorate that um, but just prior to that we're going to this little cavity here we're going to fill with our ballast and our ballast is supplied in the kit as a strip of self-adhesive um, leading. I just get it out of the bag here. There it is. And what we need to do is remove the uh, backing to expose the self-adhesive part of the material. And then we need to roll it as tightly as we can so it fits neatly into that cavity. So um, the adhesive isn't too strong so you can have a couple of goes at this just to uh, try and get it as tight as possible. But you need to use the whole of the, uh, the piece to, uh, to provide enough weight on the nose to balance the aircraft. So you can see it's rolling neatly here and once I've got it all done we'll come back and fit it. So there we go we've got our little rolled up piece of uh, piece of ballast situated in the cavity and just on the top of the nose there. Um, if you need to sand or file away at that cavity just to make sure that it fits snugly then uh, then do so. Now what we need to do is just assemble our three stickers on the uh, on the nose area here um, to represent quite nicely the, uh, the little intake on the aircraft. Okay we've come to that time to apply our side cheeks to the aircraft in the nose area to build it up slightly and I've got a little tip for, uh, for anyone building any of our Micro Aces aircraft, but especially those that have a, uh, a long portion of Depron behind the area where the, uh, where the receiver sits. This particularly relates to the part that's going on to the port side of the aircraft um, and where you have the, uh, the elevator and rudder controls running through. What we can do, if you grab a pen or pencil or, or anything like that and actually press down to crush the Depron in that area on the inside of the part that you're going to attach to the port side of the nose of the aircraft and really give that a good press down so that you get a nice curve on the inside. When it comes to attaching it to the side of the aircraft and um, you get a nice relaxed area here so you're not going to press down on the control rods and, and bind them or stop them or prevent them moving. Uh, nice little tip and uh, really helps with the, uh, the controls of the aircraft. With the nose parts built up, one of the uh, next stages which is uh, certainly new for this particular build is now the attachment of the uh, the undercarriage legs. There's a little slot that's been created by the laser underneath this radiator intake and essentially our component that we made up in one of the first stages of the uh, of the build can now be slotted into place and it can be quite a tight squeeze so um, just gently coax it into place and push it as far forward as you wish and that's where 
the uh, where the component sits. Now, the best thing to do at this point is is possibly just put a few dabs of glue in there to uh, to hold it in place, or even put some glue on this side of the component and then tuck it in there. What we'll then do is add our external fuel tank parts underneath the wing and then put our underwing fillets onto the, uh, onto the uh, stickers. We have our undercarriage now in place sandwiched between the uh, external fuel tank here and the fuselage. We've put the, uh, the fillet stickers on the underside here and also decorate the, the fuel tank as well. And the next step is to actually attach the struts that come from the fuselage up to the main wing, to the top wing of the aircraft. So, here we have our glued parts, but before we actually attach them here, what we're going to do is actually decorate them with their stickers. I'm going to show you the technique that uh, can be used to accurately attach these quite intricate uh, and delicate stickers. So uh, here we go. Starting on the left side of this particular structure, um, and from the rear moving forward we can apply our stickers. Now, the first sticker to go on, uh, the best method uh, obviously it wraps around this particular part so it covers the outside and inside of the strut and the easiest way to uh, get that done is by initially just applying it to the one side like so lining it up nice and square on the part and then pushing the inside or pushing to the inside the sticker so that it just moves around to cover the other side and there we go, it's as simple as that. I'll carry on and decorate the uh, the rest of the, uh, the part and then we can attach it to the fuselage. Just a quick note, always adhere to the sticker sequence because a number of these stickers, um, especially the, uh, the ones at the back and the front, um, are slightly differently shaped um, from one side to the other and so they're basically mirror images of each other. So it's important that you get the right sticker going on the right part. It's all very clear in the assembly instructions, so if you need to refer back or make sure, double check, then go back to the instruction manual and uh, you should find the details there. So we have our cabane struts completely decorated now with uh, all of the appropriate stickers. Now this needs to be attached to the airframe in this position here facing forward and uh, the best thing to do is to just put a little bit of yoohoo on the bottom side of here place it in position and then stick it down it's worth actually also checking the uh, alignment of it just to make sure that it's sitting correctly and uh, embedded in there so uh, you can do that whilst the glue is uh, whilst the glue is drying off, and then once that is in place, we have a number of small pieces of Depron um, that sit on top of it and secure it into place. Um, and these parts sit on the outside there. We'll glue them into place and uh, get every, get all the uh, structure together. That's how the cabane struts get uh, get put in place. So I've got the first part of the Depron fillet in place. Now the second part sits over the top like that and it's quite a tight fit so don't be afraid to 
push it into place and uh, make sure that it follows a nice line from the uh, top of the existing nose section right back to the cockpit area. Um, you can dry fit it first and if you're happy with where it sits without having to um, sand it or uh, adjust it in any, any way then um, we can now apply it with a, a, little, bit of, uh, a little bit of adhesive. Prior to wrapping the nose in all of the, uh, all of the stickers uh, we also have a carbon fibre piece that, uh, that actually sits in the nose area here and we glue it in place and that adds a great deal of structural strength without adding a, a great deal of weight um, to this, uh, this nose area. So don't forget to, uh, to glue this in before we start putting the, uh, putting the edge stickers onto the aircraft. Another thing to note on this build is that the, um, the actual motor mount, when installed, just needs a little bit of trimming at the front here to retain the shape of the outline of the aircraft. Now, you can either do this um, by using a knife and cutting away at it, or um, the plastic will sand quite nicely using the sanding stick. So you can very gently just take away some of the material so that the uh, so the motor mount becomes flush with the outline of the aircraft.